Okay, Tracy, you're live. All right, hi everyone. My name is Tracy. I'm gonna be your tour guide here at Hearst Castle today. Uh, welcome and happy Earth Day. I would like to invite you on a incredible Earth Day adventure with me. It's a dynamic program today and we're going to be exploring the flowering gardens of Hearst Castle. We're gonna meet with one of our garden staff. We're gonna to go to the compost piles, play with some dirt, and maybe even discover some worms uh, today. I also wanna show you how the gardening staff at Hearst Castle has these efforts to reduce, reuse, and recycle some of the uh, plant material here in the gardens. And they do that by the act of composting. So maybe you have a compost at home. Do you save your veggie scraps and your fruit scraps and eggshells? And do you put it in a compost bin or maybe into a, a big pile of dirt? If you know what I'm talking about, raise your digital hand. I wanna see who already knows what composting is. And don't worry, if you don't, we have this, whole program is about composting and we have an activity towards the end. Wow, I got 50 hand raises so far, awesome. Uh, for those of you who are new to this, I'm just learning myself, but we have this really cool activity at the end of our program uh, that will show you how you can compost at home. Now look around all this beautiful green and uh, flowering plants. We've got the camellias behind me. First Castle Garden is a little ecosystem. An ecosystem is a, uh, a community. It's of, of natural uh, things, of living and non-living things like rocks and soil. It has plants and trees and animals and insects and, and birds. Now in the soil, there are beneficial organisms. They benefit the soil to make it healthy. And the soil in the gardens then supports the plants to help, help them be happy and healthy and to grow. And the plants and the trees in these gardens, they help to support the animals and the birds and the insects. <clears throat> they provide them uh, shelter, homes, and food. So that is a garden as an ecosystem. And our program today is gonna to take you through the different ways that our Hearst Castle Gardening staff helps to keep our gardens <clears throat> healthy through composting. Now we have a lot of oranges. That looks like a really nice colorful orange, right? I'd love to share it with you, but I'm not gonna eat this orange. I'm gonna compost it. It's actually going through the process of decomposition right now. Let's see if we can get that on the screen. You can see that a uh, blemish, it's already starting to decompose. Something that decomposes breaks down the material of this piece of fruit breaks down into something else. That's part of composting. So what is composting? Why is it beneficial? We're gonna meet with, one of our Hearst Castle gardening staff to answer those questions. Let me put my mask on. Right this way, everyone. Here is Shannon right now. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Tracy. Happy Earth Day, everyone. Awesome. Happy Earth Day. Everyone raise your digital hand to Shannon. Hi. We've got, eight, of you. <laughs> we've got 18 hands up so far. Hi. So what are we doing here? So today we're going to take a little journey down to our compost site. But first, I'm showing you what will be going in them. So I'm collecting dead plant material. Um, and as a gardener at Hearst Castle, um, I like to think of myself as a cultivator of the land, um, caring, maintaining for all these plants. And as a gardener, 
um, typical duties I do are deadheading roses, which is pruning um, towards a bud that has has already bloomed and collecting that in my bin. And this will help push out new growth in all these beautiful blossoms. These are one of our vintage roses that Hearst so admired. And then another duty is hedging. This is one of my favorite uh, things that the gardeners do because I love these beautiful hedges. You, you have to be artistic to make it so even. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A lot of skilled groundskeepers on our department maintain our hedges. And then picking up, you know, typical debris that you would find, citrus, as Tracy had mentioned, little twigs, some leaf debris, all goes into our pile. And I'm reusing one of our planted containers that we had a rose be delivered in, and I'm using that, that as my bucket. So start thinking creatively about how can, you can reuse, reduce, and recycle at home. Um, so Tracy, can you think of any way you would be considered a gardener? Well, I would say that uh, at home, since I don't have a large garden space, let's see if we can center that camera a little bit better. I'm gonna go over here. here. We go. Um, since I don't have a lot of space at my home, I like to garden in little pots and containers. So I'm still getting the soil and I'm putting it in pots and I'm putting my vegetables and my flowers in there. So I'm a gardener in that way. Can you all think of any way at home that you garden? All right, now that we're all gardeners, let's pop in our cart and we'll go drop off our dead plant material. All right, we're gonna take a drive right now. So come along with us. This is going to be fun. So there is Hearst Castle, the former home of William Randolph Hearst. And now we're at California State Park, which allows us to share this uh, wonderful place with all our viewers out there. We're gonna travel with Shannon in- Party. <laughs> party, all right. So I'm gonna hop in and I'm just gonna adjust my tripod here so it will fit better in Cardi. You might feel a little shaking going on there. So now we're gonna take Cardi along the Esplanade here. We're ready. The Esplanade is a path that runs full circle around the castle. The Esplanade was finished in about 1925 and its purpose was to connect all of the buildings. There's three cottages. There's the big house that is called Hearst Castle. It was meant to connect all the little paths. It was thought to create a harmonious whole and to accent that would be the palm trees along. Yeah, those palm trees were planted in the late 20s. And they were about 10 to 15 feet when they were first planted. And today they're over, some of them are over 70 feet tall. We have our lantana. Purple lantana on the left, azaleas on the right. There's always something in bloom. Now the citrus on, in the gardens was meant to stay on the trees for added color. So we still follow those same principles that William Randolph Hearst and his staff used back in the early 1900s, keeping the citrus on the trees. So here we are at these black, big uh, compost bins. There we go. Wow, there's a lot of material in here. I see leaves, oranges, uh, flowers, ferns on the right side. And on this side, I see a lot of big branches. So yes, Tracy, that's because this is our compostable material, which will be turned into compost going back into the garden. And this will be our chippable material, which will turn into our mulch. And I'll show you that process down at the compost site. Um, I did bring a little surprise. So anything that can't be 
eaten citrus, um, fallen citrus will go in our compost bins, but we also have food waste from the break room, apple cores, grapes, raspberries, some lettuce, and this will all get tossed in here as well. So that's from your lunch. That's from our lunch, yeah. Okay. <laughs> And then everything that I've been gathering this morning, our leaves, our twigs, and anything smaller than your pinky can be composted. If not, it would have gone in our chip bin. So you wanna go check out the compost site? Let's go check out where all of this uh, material ends up. Okay, back in Cardi. <laughs> Here we go. I'm not sure if we've had a home learning program where we're actually in motion like this. <laughs> we're gonna pass the tennis courts. There's one of the gardening vehicles right now. How many staff gardeners do we have? Oh, I think we have roughly 10 right now. <laughs> and their duties are all the duties that you can think of as gardeners would do watering, fertilizing, pruning, they're busy. So I wanted to share this photo. Oh, nope, it didn't share, hold on. I'll wait till we take this turn. Okay, here we go. So we're seeing Hearst Castle from the sky. And when we started our tour with Shannon, when we met her, we were over here. Let's see if I could use my pen tool. We were, uh, I drew an ear. <laughs> we were right about there. And now we're actually driving all the way around and we'll end up over here at the compost bin. And the Esplanade that we were driving on with all the azaleas and citrus and Mexican fan palms, it goes all the way around the castle and you can see the castle in the center. We'll be there shortly. Yes, William Randolph Hearst considered considered that esplanade to be like a harmonious whole connecting everything. And as you can see, there's a lot of historic structures at Hearst Castle. Okay. Now Shannon has set up all the equipment for us today. We're here. We're gonna go check out the compost piles. Now you have to consider if you do composting at home, you're most likely doing it on a small scale. And at Hearst Castle, we use a lot of heavy machinery and we're doing it on a large scale. This is the truck that picks up everything from the black bins that we saw that had the two sides, one for chippable material, the big branches, and then one for the material that was smaller than the pinky. So it's gonna go up to those bins and everything will get dumped into this vehicle. And this vehicle will then come back here and uh, bring all the compostable material. So Shannon's gonna show us around kind of what's what over here. So one of our grass dropped off some ivy. We're gonna sprinkle that throughout our pile. This is our first pile and you can see the material is still green. So that green is really our nitrogen and it requires one part nitrogen and two parts carbon. And the carbon is more of our brown matter leaves, twigs, sort of dirt debris. And this is where it gets dropped off from the bins that we just visited. So the truck comes around, dumps, and then we hop in the skid steer, which I'll show you over here. Are you hopping in the skid steer today? Yeah, and I'll do a little loop. 
This is going to be fun. So again, this is a big scale composting. We use big skid steers to turn our compost because composts require a turning and a mixing. Here we go. This is going to be fun. Let me see if I can zoom in. That I can see the pile steaming right now. Wow. Yeah. Just a little bit of movement creates this steam. And this process we do once a week as we turn these piles, lift them, and build them as high as we can, reaching 141 to 150 degrees in the inside. And then we move over to pile number two here and do that same process a few weeks later. And then that material starts to break down into what looks like some soil or dirt. And then a few weeks later, we hop over here. Where your material starts to break down. And that's when you see all these microorganisms. And they help break down fungus, bacteria, they all work together and these ben beneficial insects like worms here love breaking this material down. And why that happens is because the heat builds up so much steam, it helps in that decomposition process. And finally, we go to our last pile and that's where we have our soil <clears throat> amendment. Let's get a closer look. And you're wondering, oh, there's still some sticks and twigs in it. And I'll show you what we do next. Do we have any more worms? Oh, let's see. Let's see if we can find some worms. They're definitely hiding in here. They might not. You see any yet? Yeah. We just had some in our last pile. I told you all we were going to play with dirt today. <laughs> Get our hands dirty. Oh, I here. thought I saw one back here. Oh, yeah. They love to hide in the center of the pile where, where it's least disturbed. So oh, here there's we go. one. As we get towards the center of the pile here. And I have to say, Shannon, that the dirt, it doesn't smell bad. No, no. That's because the beneficial microorganisms are doing their job to break this down. And also the, the dirt is rather warm once you start to get towards the center of the pile. Yes, and that's because that heat is building up. But why we turn them and water the piles is to keep them damp so it doesn't get above 160 degrees. That's when your <laughs> beneficial microorganisms can start to break down. And some of those beneficial microorganisms are like bacteria and fungi. They are. It helps to break down the soil or I'm sorry, the um the, the debris. The debris or organic material to make it more <laughs> of a high higher quality. Try to get those worms in there. So you are 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 sifting out the larger wooden pieces. Yep. They haven't oh. yet broken down. Let's get that wor <laughs> Let's get this worm in our dirt. We want our, the worms in our dirt. So I'm using this six pack that we got some flowers in as our sifter. And then this debris can go back into the first pile to break down again. Oh, so wow. once we have our finished compost, we'll take our worms with us. And we'll go over to our tipping bin. 
Shannon, I have a question. Yes. Do you remember that orange I had? Yes. Hold on. Let's bring it back. Do you all remember this orange that I had? I wasn't going to eat. I was going to compost. What pile do I put this orange in? Can you see the ones with green matter? Okay, everyone. You ready? Nitrogen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna come back in several weeks or maybe months. How long do you think it will take to get to the pile with all the worms? Well, with summer approaching, the heat is going to be on our side. So these piles will decompose a little bit faster. All right, we'll come back and see how the orange breaks down. <laughs> all right, and we showed you that chip pile earlier with a bunch of big sticks that were bigger than your pinky. That turns into our mulch. Not by composting though, right? Not by composting, but with our chipper here. So I'm not going to turn this on because it's way too loud, but our material will come through the chipper and we'll shoot it out into this big pile of mulch. And I'll show you how mulch is beneficial when we go up and plant a historic rose. Ooh, we're gonna plant something today, my friends. That sounds like a lot of yeah, fun. Of course. Wanna hop back in the car? Okay. So back into Cardi. So Shannon used an interesting word that I had to, to do a little research. It was soil amendment. That's what she called the composting. So when all of the plant material breaks down and the compost material breaks down, they call it a soil amendment. And an amendment is a modification of something or it's something which is added to soil in order to improve, improve its quality. And types of soil amendment are compost, uh, manure can be an, another type of organic soil amendment, sand and clay. And these things added, depending on where you live and what kind of soil you have, you might not want to use some of these things, but they are beneficial in certain times. And compost seems to be beneficial everywhere and anywhere. Anywhere and everywhere. It's just because whatever soil you have, it will improve what's already there because you're adding these beneficial microorganisms back into the ground. Like bacteria and, and fungi, which help to break down things like that orange. Yes, exactly. Now we're going to head up the staircase and plant one of our 1909 historic roses. Here's a little pathway we're going to take uh, back up to the esplanade, that pathway. That's a French word, esplanade. Um, and use some of the broken down materials that had turned into compost. So we've learned a lot about composting, but what are the benefits? We've, we've talked about that, but I wanted to bring this up. Benefits of composting introduces valuable organisms into the soil. So that's the bacteria and the fungi. It helps to reduce the amount of trash that goes into our landfill. So that's really important. It recycles plant material like kitchen scraps. So we showed you that we collected uh, apple cores and coffee grounds and such, and also grass clippings and leaves from the yard. So you can reduce reuse and then recycle the compost as well. Just like now we are in the recycle part of our Earth Day adventure where we're gonna show you how we put the compost back into the earth. All right. Here we are. Hi again. So if you live in California, you understand the benefits of water conservation. So a little bit of what we do here with the compost and chip, and here's our drip line, will help us conserve water in California. And I'll show you why in just a moment. So I pre-dug this hole. 
I'm going to break up the root slightly. And Tracy, do you remember the name of this rose? <laughs> I love the name. I think I do. A 1909 <laughs> Excellence von Schmidt. Schubert. Schubert. <laughs> Close. Close. Has beautiful purple flowers about to bloom. Oh, yeah, they are. Very nice. So, Tracy, when we brought up native soil and uh, soil amendments, native soil is, is what was already in the ground. So, in your backyard, that would be your native soil. Here, this was um, delivered because this is a raised garden bed. And then I'm going to add compost. Which is the soil amendment. Which is a soil amendment we just made. When we turn the pile, bringing some of that And that soil, soil amendment, back. yeah, the soil amendment is going to make the native soil healthier. Healthier, and it will ex expand these roots throughout the bed, and it will be a well-established plant. It's going to be very happy in its new home. I can even see the difference in, in color and texture exactly. between the, uh, the compost, the soil amendment, and the native soil. Exactly. I'm sure all of you have maybe planted something at home before in your backyards or in a planter in your windowsill. Try adding some compost that we make later today into your next planting. Raise your hand if you're going to try to add compost into your next into the next time you plant something in the ground or in a pot is anyone going to do that we've got a couple hands up you want your plants to be happy and healthy and that will do the trick oh that's beautiful oh and now, then you're adding something else we're going to add our chip which is our mulch from all the fallen branches You can use your hands or a little rake to spread it around. Now, what are the benefits of adding the mulch on top of that combination of compost and native soil? So if you're a gardener, you don't like weeding, mulch helps suppress your weeds and it helps keep your soil level cooler, which has you use less water. So you're saving water, you're keeping your plants cool and happy, and you're suppressing the weeds so you don't have to go out in your garden and weed as much. <laughs> well, that's great for saving water and that's really great for the planet. Exactly, and that's why at Hearst Castle, we try to get creative and think about different ways we can reuse, reduce, and recycle whenever possible. This looks like too much fun. I gotta get in on yeah, this. Yeah, get in on this. <laughs> wow, this plant, the uh, 1909 Excellence Von Schubert. Schubert. <laughs> it's That's going awesome. to be happy. Well, I think it's time to uh, show everyone at home how they can create their own compost. We have an activity. Stick with us for three more minutes. I'm going to head over here. And this is how all of our 900 plus roses have been cared for throughout the year. Okay, I'm gonna make my tripod a little taller now. So you might experience some shaking on the audience end. And we've got a table set up right here. So this is a soilarium. And this, you could do actual composting at home. Shannon just made this. Eventually it's gonna be filled with that soil amendment or that compost. It'll look like dirt, right? So you're gonna grab a wide mouth glass jar. She already poked holes in it. Definitely ask your parents to help you poke a hole in your jar. You're going to need some Yard debris, we've got leaves and dirt and little twigs, some old newspaper, 
and you're gonna need some fruit and vegetable uh, like peels and cores. I've got sweet potato, eggshell, that was breakfast, coffee grounds. I got some olive seeds and leaves and broccoli in there. <laughs> mm, anybody hungry? First, we're gonna toss some soil into the jar. So let's get some soil. You wanna do a layer of soil. Now, if you don't have these items with you this morning, I didn't expect you to have them. You can always watch this on our YouTube, okay? California State Park Ports, P-O-R-T-S, YouTube. You're going to add some newspaper. Let's get a good layer. Just think of it layering it like a parfait. Add that newspaper in. Then you're gonna grab fruit and vegetable scraps. These are all okay to put in a compost. Things you don't wanna add would be dairy, any fats like uh, butter or fat from meat. You don't wanna add meat because then it would get stinky. All right, and then we're gonna do that again. Actually, we're gonna add some dead leaves on top. We got that. That's your carbon. I, that's our carbon. I'm just going to grab some leaves off the ground, too, because we've got a lot <laughs> down there. Now I'm going to go through that process again. We're going to go dirt, newspaper scraps. That might be too much. See, this gets fun and it gets messy, so be prepared, <laughs> but I like messy. Some, some more veggie scraps. And then I'm going to put a cup of water. So we don't want it all the way, but about a cup will do. Then I'm going to put the lid back on. Look at that beautiful mix. It's a tasty parfait. Um, I'm going to add my name. I'll go Tracy. And this is Shannon's. Thank you, Tracy. And I'm going to label it. Okay, so my, can you see this okay? Yep. I'm labeling a line so we could see where it starts on Earth Day. I'll put the date, Earth Day. And I'm gonna put this on a sunny windowsill and we're just gonna watch it every two weeks. We're gonna see how far this mixture decomposes and breaks down. And it's gonna get less and less and less and it's gonna look more like the compost pile that we saw. I've heard you even can find worms in it. Um, mm -hmm. So that is a possibility. So I would like to, you to try this uh, solarium. And again, you can check out this video on YouTube if you didn't have these uh, things with you today. Shannon even put bumblebees on it. I love it. <laughs> so expect this to take a little bit longer than our compost piles because this is called slow composting. And we use the form called hot composting down at the beast or down at the compost piles. So remember, yours might take a little bit longer, but then once it's finished, you can add it right back into your garden. Well, I would like to thank you, Shannon, for joining me today. I've learned so much and I had a lot of fun looking for worms and playing in the dirt. Thank you for joining us on Earth Day. And please, as you go throughout your day and the rest of the year, think about ways that you too can compost, but you can reduce, reuse, and, and recycle. recycle. Thanks everyone. Thank Bye. You. Happy Earth Day.